So the revolutionary thing about this analyzer is that we've eliminated the radioactive source, and that is really, really important. I'm Don Sackett, CEO, co-founder of Psyaps, and we're here to show you this great new lead paint analyzer that we introduced about a month ago into the marketplace for lead paint inspections. The device now has its HUD PCS. It's a great PCS. It's been uh, published at the federal action level of 1.0 milligram per square centimeter, 0.5 for New York City, and 0.7 for state of Maryland, LA County, few other places that operate at the 0.7 milligram uh, action level. So the revolutionary thing about this analyzer is that we've eliminated the radioactive source, and that is really, really important because that means you don't have any of the radiation licensing headaches and costs that many of you have been dealing with for decades. Um, you never have to replace a source, so you have much lower operating costs. In fact, the x-ray tube that's in this device, we give it a five-year warranty, so over five years you'll never have a replacement cost for that source. And you can travel with it easily because it's no radioactive materials, it's a simple registration process, and also the device never gets slower. It starts fast. In fact, if you review our PCS, it's the fastest analyzer for lead paint on the market. So it starts fast and it stays fast. You never lose speed because there's nothing in there decaying away. And what I like about it too is when the device is not in use, just take your everyday Geiger counter, there's no radiation at all. There's no x-rays coming out when the device is not in use, as you can tell. So um, think about that and compare that to your isotope-based analyzer. Um, like for example, up here in this quick clip, you'll see what, how that looks for, with an isotope system where you always have radiation coming out of the device, whether you're using it or not. So first of all, the x-ray tube unit, when it's not on, when you're not actually testing, it's not creating any radiation. This is a standard Geiger counter. You can put it all around here. You know, you hear that clicking like that? That's just background radiation. A click every couple of seconds. And when you put it up close to the device, there's no change. So what you're seeing is there's no x-rays being made when you're not using the device. Now let's compare that to the device that uses a radioactive source. Remember, a radioactive source is a radioactive material that's decaying away, so it's always giving off radiation. It doesn't it doesn't matter if the device is on or off, in use or not, it's always constantly decaying and giving off radiation. So the, the isotope unit, all right, again, here's our background way out here, but when you put it up close to the unit, you can see here there's a fair amount of radiation coming out, even when there's no test being taken, all right? There's more on the sides, there's a little more on the bottom, but that again, that this device is not being operated, that's just how it is all the time. Anyway, so that's the quick tour. Let's give you a quick tour of the analyzer, and then we'll shoot some stuff to show you how fast it is, and then we'll go through some of the features. So first of all, this is the gun. The battery pack is down here. It gives you about six to eight hours of use. You get a spare battery, you get a charger, um, and the, the display is on the back of the analyzer, so it's easy to read while you're testing. Um, one thing you'll notice up front, there's no proximity sensor like on your isotope device. Because there's no radioactive material, you don't need the proximity sensor. So you don't have to worry about always having the gun flush on the material you're testing. That's a big advantage. There's no proximity sensor to break or get jammed or something to override for dark paint. Anyway, so that all goes away with this device. Uh, inside here is where you can plug it in for AC power. You can download the data. Uh, through a USB, it's also got Wi-Fi, it's got Bluetooth, and we even have a cloud feature if you're interested in that, where you can pull the data in real time off any device anywhere in the world. So that's in a, in a quick summary, that is the analyzer. So let's take you through the operation of the device um, as, it, uh, as the PCS describes. First of all, when you turn it on, the first thing you do from a cold power up is you put this little clip on the front and you press calibrate. And what that's doing is that's calibrating the detector energy scale and the x-ray tube in, internally. That takes about 15 seconds. And when it's done, as you'll see, it just says pass calibration and you're good to start testing. So there, calibration has been successfully completed. 
So you do that. And then the next step is to do your PCS calibration check. So we include a little test block. It's got the NIST 1.0 uh, standard, which is what you calibrate to, or check your calibration to, and it's got a blank if you need the blank, and it's on a block of wood. So when you do that, you just put it on that NIST sample, and you pull the trigger, and it does its test, and it's about a 10 second test, and then you see it comes in at 1.1. According to the PCS, as long as the device comes in between 0.8 and 1.2, it's a pa it's a, a pass. So as you can see there, it's a cal pass. So now those two steps, you shoot this, you check that, and now you're good to start testing for lead. So let's look at a couple of different uh, lead levels. First of all, the device is set up at a classification level of 1.0, which is the federal standard. So let's just take a uh, let's take a 0 0.3, about a 0 0.3 level nit. Um, you know what? Let's start on the high end to show you how real how fast this device is on a positive. So let's start with the highest lead sample we can get in a standard, the three, three and a half or so. So you see in less than a second, it gives you a positive. Let's do that again. Less than a second, it gives you a positive on, on a high lead. Now that's three and a half. Let's try the one six. Shoot that. Less than a second again, a positive on the 1.6 versus the 1.0 federal action level. Let's do that again, but one second test. And you'll remember with an x-ray tube technology that that test will always be one second. It'll never get slower with the x-ray tube. That's the beauty of getting rid of that isotope. All right, so let's go to something, let's go to something that's around 0.7. This will take a little longer because you have to make sure it's statistically less than the 1.0 value by a, with a 95% confidence. So we'll shoot this other standard that's about 0.7, one, two, Three. So this is about a three second test. You get your negative as you can see right there. All right, let's do it again. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, you get your negative. So that's about a three second test if you have something that's below the action level but close to it. All right, and then same thing. Here's a, a 0.3. Let's shoot that a couple of times. All right, let's see it comes up 0.3 right away. It takes again about two to three seconds to give you that negative. Do it again. 1,001, 1,002. So you get your negative about three seconds, all right? So that's how the operation works um, at the federal level. Now, like I mentioned before, this device has a PCS at 0.5 and also 0.7. It also, for any of those uh, action levels and any of those PCSs on this device, there's no inconclusive range, there's no inconclusive tests at all. So that's a real, another real advantage. You can test in New York City at the 0.5 level and you will never have an inconclusive test to worry about. And there's never a substrate correction. So let's show you how, now let's say we're in New York City. We tap the menu because it's an Android based system. We tap classification level and instead of having it at 0.1, Let's drop that to 0 0.5. Check. So now we're at a classification level of 0 0.5. And let's go back and let's shoot some stuff. So now let's shoot, um, let's shoot a 0.7. This is a positive, but just a little bit above the uh, 0.5 at classification or action level. All right, shoot that. Again, a couple of seconds and you've got your positive and you're done, all right? If you're, if you're leaving higher, you're up around one, one six, you say you're back to those really fast tests, about one second, all right? See how fast that was, pull the trigger, done after less than a second. And then for a negative, let's shoot the 0.3, because this is pretty close to 0.5. This should be about a three or four second test to get a negative, all right? So there you go, about three and a half seconds. Let's do that again. That's the one, 1,002. 2003, and then get a negative. So there you go. So there's your negative um, versus the 0.5 action level. So that's how the device works. As you see, it's, it's really fast on positives. It takes a few extra seconds on negatives to really be sure about those negatives. And um, the best thing is, without the radiation source, you'll never, ever get slower. You'll never have a source to replace. And you won't have that, that three or $4,000 cost you've been paying every year, year and a half to resource your device. All that goes away with this analyzer. So you're totally covered for at least five years. Um, a few other features to talk about. 
before we get into the, um, some of the uh, data entry and the reporting, uh, first of all, you see this, there's a, this, this, this opening down here is a camera. There's actually two cameras in this device. There's an internal camera that allows you to see the sample. Now that may not be really important in lead paint testing because you're not looking at really small areas, but it's there if you need it. This is called a macro camera. It's like what's in your cell phone. You can take a picture with this camera just like your cell phone, and you can store that picture with your test. So for example, if you want to document a paint condition or some deteriorating paint or some, something about the area you're testing, you can take a picture and you can save that with the reading. Um, this will also read QR codes and barcodes. If for some reason you need to want to use barcodes to identify materials, you can generate barcodes. This will read them for you. So that's how the camera works. Again, a great feature on this device. Mm -hmm.